Simon here, best known for my rent to rent 2.0 empire. And what I like to do on this channel is share my journey, okay? Share how I'm doing it, how you can do it too, what the pitfalls are, how you can then reinvest that money into BRRs for long term legacy wealth, okay? If that sounds good, hit the subscribe button and join me every single week for constant content. And comment below, let me know who is your favorite rent to rent sort of content provider, okay? Let me know, let me know what you wanna see more of. Comment below and get at me, because I personally think, yeah, that when I was starting, if I had me doing this amount of rent to rent content, oh my gosh, it would have been so much easier. So comment below, let me know. If you're finding this stuff useful and if you want me to do more, even requests of videos you might want me to do, post them below. So I'm just at one of my latest rent to rent deals and just a little bit of an update. Over the last few months, I've been doing a lot of consolidating on the rent to rent side. We hit a million pound worth of annual revenue and it was like, okay, well, time to systemize. So we've now hired, uh, we've done our ninth hire now. So it's 11, including me and Lucy, uh, which is fantastic. We've separated the HMO and the SA side so that they have their own teams. But now we've settled down, okay? Now we're in a good place and we've got the teams and the systems. It's time to scale from one million up to three. So I'm doing five rent to rent deals this month and this is one of them. And what I wanna do on this video, something a little bit different, is I want to show you before I touch a thing, caveat, that's not quite true, you'll see in a minute, but I wanna show you at the beginning and then I wanna show you what I'm looking for in terms of the refurbs, how much I'm gonna spend, what I'm willing to change, what the landlord needs to change, and how I'm justifying spending the money on this particular property. So in real time, okay, we're gonna go through this property and I'm gonna explain what we're doing, what I'm paying for, what I'm not, and what are red flags, and maybe, you know, where's the gray area where you, need to do it and how you weigh that up. So this property is a three bedroom property. It's got two and a half bathrooms, but it's got two massive downstairs reception rooms, which gives us a lot of flexibility. You know, could do HMO, could do SA, just depends how we're feeling. And to be honest with you, I know this area well, and I know SA is working amazingly at the moment. So in a five year deal, there's no reason why you can't do a bit of both. So what I wanna do is I wanna take you around and show you what I'm looking for. So firstly, the first thing I'm always looking for is the condition of walls, the condition of decoration. So if you have a look at the walls around the property, you'll notice the walls aren't in bad condition. Okay, the colors, the decorations a bit rubbish, but uh, a lot of it is actually um, wallpaper or lining paper that we can paint over. So I'm looking for the condition of walls. Ideally, I want nice clean walls um, in terms of the flatness and the smoothness. What I'm looking for is if there's loads of wood chip wallpaper, if there's loads of badly plastered stuff, I'm looking for that because I don't really want too much than painting. So in here, I'm pretty happy that we're just gonna be able to paint. Now, also connected to the walls, you will notice in the second reception room, there's actually damp, okay? So what's happened is the landlord has said, yeah, we'll deal with it. Uh, we've helped with the agent and we've now done a damp proof course in here. And damp, even though it's a pain in the backside, it's not that deep. All you actually have to do is go back to brick about a metre high and inject the walls sometimes internally, sometimes externally, um, and that should do the trick. Also, what you'll notice in a lot of Victorian properties, the chimney might be full of water and full of stuff, so it's not being able to actually ventilate. So sometimes you think it's damp and it's, and it's actually that, because in the basement here, it's all dry and pretty sound. But anyway, landlord's paying for that. It's actually gonna take three weeks to dry, so that gives us time to do all the other works. So first thing, condition of walls, look out for damp. And if there is damp, do not pay for it. It's not your responsibility, but you can help the, um, you can help the landlord do it. Next thing I'm looking for is the flooring, okay? We're really lucky in here because we've got this amazing Minton flooring for the hall, which is epic to be honest with you. Then we've got a lot of carpet, and I'll be honest with you, the carpet's a bit mousy, it's a bit worn, it's got stains, it's coming up. So all the carpet will need replacing. 
Kitchen floor, I'm okay with. It's neutral, should be fine. And the bathrooms, well, one of my biggest, biggest hates is carpet in a bathroom. I do not want that. I do not want your pee stinking up the carpets when you come around for dinner, all right? So that's gotta go. Get rid of the carpet, vinyl flooring in there, which should be nice, okay? Should set it off. Who's funding? Well, guys, carpet is a tricky one, but my rule is if a family would move in like this, then I'm not gonna expect the landlord to pay. If, however, the carpet's got stains on, it's a bit smelly, it's had pets in or whatever, then you know I'm expecting the landlord to contribute. In this instance, we're looking at a 50-50 split. We'll put in half, the landlord will put in half, and it's happy days. Third thing I'm looking for is the quality of bathrooms. Okay, how modern are they? Do they look solid? Does the plumbing look good? And in this property, it's a bit tough, okay? Um, so all the plumbing looks solid, but the tiles, oh, they're like so borderline. They're dated and they're not really what I'd usually go for. I am not going to be replacing bathrooms and tiles and stuff. I'm never doing that. And you've got to think it's a big investment for a landlord and not something that they're just going to be able to do. It's also going to take quite a long time. So I'm hoping the vinyl flooring um, should set these bathrooms off. But this is about as worse as I would go in terms of bathrooms. It's about as worse as I would go. Benefit is there's two and a half of them, okay? And, you know, they're, they're not too bad. So this is passable. Fourth thing I'm looking for, yep, you guessed it, is kitchens. So they don't need to be the best kitchen in the world, but they do need to be solid, neutral, and as modern as possible. So this kitchen, the cupboards aren't too bad, so I'm not mad at that. The work surface isn't too bad also. The, um, the hob isn't great, could look at changing that. The extractor fan could look at changing that, okay? But I'm not putting too much sort of pressure on a landlord to do things like that. As long as the cabinets are neutral and it's pretty good, then I'm happy to work with it and maybe look at upgrading later down the line. So. In here, just a real deep clean, make sure that everything's good, make sure the appliances are working, and I believe we will need to add a fridge, freezer, nice dining table, happy days. Fifth thing, you need to look at all of your viewings, this is absolutely necessary, is the boiler and the plumbing. So I'm looking at the age of the boiler, I'm finding out if there's a gas safety certificate, there should be, I'm finding out, look, I'm looking at the radiators, and. When you've got double panel radiators, they tend to um, be more efficient and they're banging out more heat. So I'm looking at the central heating system. Now, if I see a new boiler, tick, happy days. If I see a boiler that's over 10, 15 years old, like this one, then I'm a little bit apprehensive, but I know as long as there's hot water and as long as the radiators are hot, I'm good because I will make sure in the agreement that the landlord um, obviously is responsible for the boiler. So should it go, the landlord would need to replace that anyway. But always good to know what you're dealing with. Top tip, often overlooked, as well as the boiler, look for the thermostat on the wall and see how modern that is. So the one here is right there, and provided that works, which I've checked and it does, it just allows you to set the temperature, duh. But more importantly, it's, it's a little thing that guests are gonna need or tenants are gonna need. And if they have to go on the boiler, they mess about with it, they drop the pressure, it's normally headaches. So top tip, look for a thermostat. Next thing, and easy to overlook, is electrics, mainly plug sockets. So, especially when you're changing layouts around and might maybe using a reception room as a bedroom, they're not always designed for beds. So you need to make sure that they've got enough plug sockets and the plug sockets are in the right place. Have you ever stayed at a hotel where literally you're at the bed, the bedside, there's nowhere to plug in your phone? Or there's a lamp on the bedside table but no plug? It's a nightmare and it's something I pull my hair, not got much, but I pull my hair out about because when we're replastering and rewiring purchases, it's so important that you get the plug placement right. So have a little look. There should be a minimum of three plugs in each of your main rooms. That's good, okay, compliant as well. And if there's not, you need to look where they are 
you know, there have been occasions where we will add sockets, but thankfully in here, we don't need to do that. So electrics are all good. And of course, you're gonna make sure that you do an EICR or the, the, la the landlord or the agent should have done that if it's a company let fire an agent to make sure that the electrics are safe and sound. Moving on, next thing I'm always looking for is the garden and just overall curb appeal. Okay, is the back garden nice, low maintenance? Is the front nice, low maintenance? Gardens can be super expensive and take a while to get fixed if they're poor. So make sure that you have a look now and that if it's going to be a big investment, that's something the landlord should be doing. So in this instance, I think we just need to get gardeners around. Landlord will be funding, but I'm not too concerned about it. The front's absolutely fine. And top tip, parking is essential. So here we've got on-road parking, which, you know, it's not the best, but it's not permits. And many cars as you want, first come, first serve. So that is a big tick. And that's something that I would always look for and make sure that you do too, trust me. Next is compliance, okay? So if a property is a HMO, you're gonna need to make sure that it's got the necessary fire doors or that you put them in. You're gonna need to make sure that you've got the right amount of hard wired smoke alarms, etc. And top, 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 top tip, never ever take on a HMO when someone claims it's a HMO without seeing a current HMO license, please. You don't want to make that mistake and I've seen it done before. If it's likely to be an SA, you're only going to need a couple of hardwired smoke alarms, okay? You're just going to want them on each floor and then you're going to want a heat alarm in the kitchen. So have a look, but I'm not an electrician, disclaimer. So get your electricians around and let them advise you. And last but not least, easy to miss, but just look for your windows, okay? Are they double glazed? And if they're wooden, how is the condition? So you'll notice we've got some really poor condition, wood rotting on these windows, which is something that you need to get done. Because if you don't tackle this at the beginning, and you get clients or tenants or guests moving in, it's gonna come back and bite you in the behind, I promise you. So we've said to the landlord, look, here's the pictures, we need to look at this, he's gonna get some specialist round. Um, and that's once again something that we would never do because we don't need to do that. You would need to do that for any family. You need windows that are open and that are, you know, heat effective, heat efficient, okay? Naturally. So I hope you found this video useful. If you like this format, let me know, comment below. Of course, I'm gonna do an after video tour when all this stuff is done, but you're gonna get a flavor for what it's like now, what I'm looking for, and what it will be like at the end. So I'm estimating the main renovation costs of this are gonna be around seven, eight K, and we will likely split that in half 50-50 with the landlord. Um, we'll get a decent rent um, free period to do all this stuff, and then we will furnish the property. So I'm gonna be in for around 7,000 pounds, six, 7,000 pounds on this one. This is one of you know, the bigger ones because it's quite a large property. But property like this might be able to generate over a thousand, fifteen hundred, maybe even two grand a month if done correctly. So I'll break even within six months and then we can crack on to the next deal and the next deal and the next deal. Hope you found this useful. If you have, if you like content like this, hit the subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one. Introducing Creative Cashflow Plus, the first rent to rent app and leading platform dedicated to supporting you on your property journey. Ask the experts anything. Be held accountable so that you can smash your goals. Mastermind with other rent to rent specialists. Access our deal clinic to get your deals analyzed by a pro. And unlock hours of videos and podcasts guaranteed to help you take your rent to rent business to the next level. Get the ongoing support that you deserve. Join us, Creative Cashflow Plus.